What's going on on Avena Nation? Welcome to a brand new video. I got a special treat with you guys today. I have a collab slash interview with an author we recently did a review for. His name is Evan Carmichael. He has a YouTube channel on YouTube as well and they call it Evan Carmichael. And as you guys know, I was dealing with a lot of personal stuff last month that prevented me from doing this collab live with uh, Evan over on like a live stream or anything. But Evan and his team have been so nice and kind and really supportive while I was dealing with that personal stuff. And he was kind enough to do the interview uh, on his end. So I thought I'd share with you guys Evan answering his question, the questions I gave to him and uh, doing this interview. So here you guys go. Here is my interview with Evan Carmichael. Enjoy. What's up, Avena Vlogs fans? My name is Evan Carmichael. I am the author of Your One Word, The Powerful Secret to Creating a Business and Life That Matter. I've been connected with Anthony, and he had six questions that he wanted to ask me that I could hopefully provide some value to you. So let's get into them. What do we got? First one coming up is, what inspired you to write Your One Word? So Your One Word is a book about finding your most important core value. What is the single most important thing that you stand for as a human being and then bringing that to your business? What inspired me to write it was my agent wanted me to write a book and I didn't want to write a book. I never had a dream of writing a book. It wasn't something I thought I needed to do to open doors or any of the things that you, you know, might have a book for. And as we started getting to the process of talking to publishers, initially we were being pitched one idea and I wanted to then switch it to this idea. Because I was in the process of going through, finding my one word, applying it to my business, having success, doing interviews with other people who had done it themselves as well. And as I traveled across North America talking to different businesses, I met people who built a $50,000 full-time income from themselves around their one word. Someone who had a half a million dollar business and a $1 million business and a $5 million business and a $150 million business. And all of these people, and myself included, had built businesses around our one word of different sizes but nobody had a blueprint. There was no roadmap to follow. Everybody I talked to just kind of figured things out on their own. And I thought, what if I created the blueprint so I could learn from it myself, but also gift it to other people who wanted to go through that process? And I thought that that really called for a book format, much more than a YouTube video, which I may be more well known for, at least at this point. Uh, and so that's what inspired me to write it. I felt like giving somebody the manual to be able to build a powerful business that they truly believed in, not just the product or service that they were selling, but the process of running and building a company, making it really powerful and building a team of people who are connected to you and love what you're doing and the why, I thought was important. And so uh, that's what led me to want to write this book. Number two, for those who don't know you, tell us a bit about yourself. So hello, I'm Evan Carmichael. Uh, I was an entrepreneur, I think my whole life, but my first real business was when I was 19 years old. I thought I wanted to be a banker. In my high school yearbook, it says, what are you gonna be in 10 years? I put VP at a bank. And I had opportunities to go and do that. But I also had this other business that I was a part of, and I was not making any money, making 300 bucks a month and struggling with. And something inside me just felt like, you know what, I, I, I'm gonna not take those big job offers, and I wanna give this business a shot because I would regret not doing it. I could always go back and get another job when those offers came in, but I couldn't, I didn't know if I'd ever get this opportunity again. And so I stuck with the business. We turned it around. Within a couple of years, I had sold the company. Um, I joined a venture capital company, was raising half a million to $15 million for companies, and started getting asked to speak. Uh, you know, I was 22 when I sold my business. As a result, you know, young success entrepreneur story, I guess, got around, and I got asked to do a lot of speaking. And I just, I loved helping entrepreneurs. I feel like, when I was getting started, I thought it was gonna be easy to be an entrepreneur, and I just read the magazine articles and all the stories about people having success, and I just felt like it was gonna be easy. I, I knew it was gonna be a lot of work, but I was used to hard work, and here I was putting in a lot of work and not having success. Like I, I really struggled at the start of the company. <sighs> it was rough. Uh, and then when I started helping out, when I got asked to do speaking, it really made me feel good to help out other entrepreneurs. Maybe people could avoid some of the mistakes that I made. And one of the things that saved my company was modeling Bill Gates and how he built his software company. I never met him, but I learned from his success. And I took that strategy everywhere I went. If I don't know how to do something, I try to look for people who do know 
and copy them, even if I never meet them, just by watching their videos. That's what most of my YouTube channel is about as well, modeling success. And so I just really love that idea of helping out other entrepreneurs, because I think entrepreneurs are going to be people who solve all the world's problems. Uh, it's not going to be the government. It's not going to be the big corporations. It's going to be entrepreneurs. We're the ones who have to take responsibility. We're the ones who don't complain. We're the ones who figure things out. We see a problem, and we want to solve that problem. And so if I can do some work to encourage entrepreneurs and get them along their path a little bit faster and having an impact, that's what motivates me to do what I do every day. Uh, I think I'm most well known now for my YouTube channel. I've got close to 700,000 subscribers on the channel, and it's daily content of inspiring and uh, tactical things that you can do as an entrepreneur to build your company, make a big impact on the world. Number three, what made you want to start making videos on YouTube? So the genesis for me was twofold. One, I was getting asked a bunch of questions about entrepreneurship. And so because I was doing speaking, uh, people would write into me and say, hey, Evan, how do I solve this problem? And at the beginning, it was very flattering. And it's still, it's still flattering that people you know, trust you and want to take your advice on something. Uh, it's still very humbling and an and amazing experience. Uh, and at the start, I would just respond by email. I wasn't getting a huge influx, right? I might get one or two a day. And so I would spend 30, 40 minutes responding to people, giving them as good an answer as I could over email. And then as I started getting a little more traction, I quickly lost huge chunks of my day just answering email. I thought, maybe I should answer some of these on video format. Uh, you can build my, my skills in speaking. And also, if I help that one person, other people may have the same problem or same question, and they could watch the video and get an answer, and I'd never have to kind of reach out to them. I never wanted to be YouTube famous. It wasn't part of my ambitions or life goals. Um, but I wanted to be able to help uh, other entrepreneurs and have a big impact on them. And so answering people's questions really helped. The other part, the other part was um, I really learned about modeling success, and it was a big, it was a big thing for me. And I'm a visual learner, and so I really wish that there were more YouTube videos out there about famous entrepreneurs. You know, if I wanted to learn about Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or whoever it was, I'd have to sit through hours and hours and hours of footage and people asking them questions that I found irrelevant to get to you know a couple minutes of gold. And so I thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was a YouTube channel out there? that compile all this stuff together. And you know, as, as entrepreneurs, what we do is we solve the problem. We see a problem, we go and we solve it. And so I decided to make that YouTube channel selfishly for myself because I wanted the content. And thankfully, there's a lot of people out there who are also being inspired and need it as well, which has allowed me to build up a team and be more consistent on the content as well. And so that combination, me being a visual learner and wanting to have more successful entrepreneur stories to share, Plus, people asking me questions, me wanting to give back and help in a way that didn't require me to sit down and write 30, 40 minute emails each time. That led to me starting the YouTube channel. Four, what would be your biggest piece of advice to someone who has found their one word and wants to establish their brand around it? So again, the idea with the one word is you have one main core value that represents who you are. When you identify what that is, then you can build a business with a lot more purpose, a lot more meaning, and you'll start attracting customers, employees, funders who believe the same thing you believe, and it makes for a much more powerful company and culture um, and raving fan base than you could otherwise build. Otherwise, you, know, you won't have a lot of loyalty to your business, and uh, people will leave you as soon as you start increasing your prices or somebody undercuts you, and that's not a great business to be in. And so if you found what it is that you stand for, and, and understand that this is not just a business thing, it starts off as a personal thing. It's not what makes sense for my business just from a marketing campaign, but what do I actually feel? Because if you don't feel connected to the message of the business, it's not going to work. It's inauthentic. Your chance to beat the big companies is through your authenticity. Why do you go and work with a smaller company versus a big brand that everybody knows? It's the authenticity. It's feeling like, this entrepreneur really cares about me and what I'm all about, and this big brand, I'm just a number to them. And so it has to be an authentic message, and for that to happen, it has to come from your heart. It's gotta come from here. And so if you've understood what your one word is, my best advice, honestly, is to go through chapter five in the book. It's about creating the marketing campaign. And so from what do we name the company or the product line you're launching to you know, what colors do you use, what is your logo, what is your font, are we using sounds, all of the things you have to think about in creating the campaign so that 
my goal is when you launch something, when you launch a product or a video or you know some kind of marketing campaign, you have a flyer or something, that people look at it and they're moved by it. I want people to look at it and the people who believe the same thing you believe want to pick up the phone and call you or they want to email you or they want to click that buy now button because they're moved by the message of why you are doing this thing, not just comparing your price to everybody else's price. And so I think chapter five is, is the best one to go through, really give you some tactical advice. Next, number five, what social media platform other than YouTube has been the most crucial or important site to connect with your audience? So that's been an interesting one for me. I started off on LinkedIn. My first social media game really was on LinkedIn. I think I, I got the accounts everywhere just to reserve the name Evan Carmichael on all of them, but I, I was most active on LinkedIn. And for a while, LinkedIn would also show you how you ranked in your country. And I was, I'm from Canada, and I was one of the most connected people in the country, which felt pretty good. Uh, but you know what? It, was, it ended up being more just of a, of a ego play more than anything else, because I realized I wasn't getting any results from it. I wasn't getting any business coming from it. And maybe I just executed it wrong, but I wasn't getting any results from LinkedIn. So I moved to spend more time on Facebook and was getting a lot of success on Facebook. Uh, Facebook became a, a pay to play environment where if you're just posting organic results, you're not really gonna get much traction. And so we do some on Facebook where there's a tangible business case for it, uh, but haven't invested most of our time there. I moved to Twitter, which I'm still fairly active on. Um, but again, people's interest in Twitter has kind of dropped off a little bit, and so I'm not getting the results I was getting before. Then I moved to YouTube, and YouTube is still my number one. YouTube is where I get the most attention, most traffic, most awareness, most fun, and therefore most of my time in terms of where I allocate across social media platforms. And I'm moving into Instagram and, and uh, Snapchat. I get more results from Instagram right now than Snapchat. If I had to compare where I was getting the most results currently, I'd look at YouTube number one by a huge mile, followed by Twitter, followed by Instagram, followed by Snapchat. I could see the Instagram, Snapchat importance growing over the next six to 24 months and Twitter decreasing, but I don't see anybody taking over YouTube, at least for my business model, anytime soon. What else? Last question, number six, this is it. What are your future plans for both your YouTube channel and or your writing? Any special projects in the works for 2017? So this is what's, camera went blurry, there we go. This is what's interesting about me. I have a, I have a big goal, I have a, I have a purpose, I have a mission for what I wanna do, and that is I wanna help a billion entrepreneurs. And I don't care about necessarily tracking that. People ask how do you track that, how do you know if you're on pace or not? It's not about hitting that number. When you set a big goal, it's not about hitting that number, it's about the process to get there. I enjoy the drive to get there. And all that means for me is I need to be working on projects that have a big impact. So I'm doing YouTube videos because it can reach millions of people. I did a book because it has the potential to reach a lot of people. I don't do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching or calls or meetings because it's not, High impact doesn't help me get to where I want to go unless that person has the ability to you know, reach out and influence a lot of people as well. And so I'm always looking at what is the impact of the work that I'm doing. I'm constantly driven by that. Is, is the time that I'm spending every day on the projects I'm working on worth it for my ultimate goal of having a, a big impact and reaching a billion entrepreneurs? That's the big picture. In the short window, I then don't really plan much beyond three to six months. So right now, my main focus is, is on my YouTube channel. It's on getting the book out. I have some ideas for new potential books that, I'm, that are kind of whirling away, but I don't know what I'm gonna look like in a year. I don't know what we're gonna look like. What's your five-year plan? I have no idea what my five-year plan is, but whatever I'm doing in five years is gonna have a big impact. That's where, I'm, that's where I gravitate and pull towards. And so I have, I have two potential book ideas that I'm working on. One is about taking the content and some of the ideas from the YouTube channel and following that into a book, so having top 10 rules for success books. And then the other is following more off of the, the foothills of the Your One Word, so that once you do find out what Your One Word is and what you stand for, and you know you have to apply it to your business, giving you the tools to do it and be resourceful and stay consistent. I find a lot of people, they get a goal, they get all excited, you know, you wanna start your business, you wanna build this new product, whatever it is, we have this list of goals, and there's some days when you're motivated on fire and have a huge high, and other days where you just let it drop, 
and you don't get the results that you're looking for. And so maintaining that consistency is important. And so that those are the two that I'm juggling. The top 10 is a lot easier to create because it's I already have the content. The other one takes a lot more work, um, but maybe more powerful, meaningful. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking about. But I haven't committed to either right now, the YouTube channel and getting the message out about your one word is the focus for the next three to six months for sure. Uh, that was it. That was it. So thank you for the opportunity to have a quick chat with you, Anthony. Thank you for all the love and work that you do, sharing your message, helping people out as well. It's an honor to be on. And I hope you guys are subscribing to him, checking out other channels, leaving some comments down below. I appreciate the love. I believe in you guys. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love. I'll see you soon. And there you guys go. That was the full unedited for the most part interview with uh, Evan Carmichael. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to say a big thank you to Evan and his team for, again, being so kind and understanding while I was dealing with that stuff last month. And for taking the time to do this interview, it really means the world to me. I hope you guys will go check out his channel. I'm going to be linking it down in the description box below, as well as in the eye in the sky up here. So make sure you guys go check his channel out and give him a big subscribe. And uh, also leave a comment on his channel, letting him know you came from Avena Nation over here. Uh, and let him know our hashtag hope is our one word. Because of him, our channel has become a really tight-knit group and community. And due to his book, Your One Word, I have found my one word and our one word, which is hope. So thank you again for Evan for not only doing this interview, but for helping to inspire some changes on my channel. Uh, make sure you guys go subscribe to him and pick up your copy. Uh, what a fantastic interview. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll give this video a big thumbs up. Like this video, comment on it, favorite it, and share it. If you have not yet, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean so much to me if you did. And if you do subscribe, make sure you click the notification button as well, because that'll give you a notification every single time I upload a brand new video. Uh, all my social media links are down below, as well as the link to Evan's channel. So make sure you go check that out so you can get his book and subscribe to him on his social media networks. And uh, yeah, that's everything, guys. Thank you for watching. Remember, Avina Nation, always keep hashtag hope alive. And I will see you for a brand new video next time. Long days and pleasant nights, my friends.